On this spooky episode of Channel 8 News, we'll be taking a look at how Northwest celebrated National LGBT History Month, followed by the Student Activity Council's Grocery Bingo Night. After that, we'll be taking a look at the Student Senate Fall Blood Drive, followed by some of the highlights from last week's homecoming festivities and more. Your Channel 8 News starts right now. Thanks for tuning in to Channel 8 News. I'm Courtney Rowe. And I'm Alexis Kuhner. The month of October was chosen to be the month of celebration to honor the marches for lesbian and gay rights, which took place in 1979 and 1987. That's right, Alexis. And with that being said, the Office of Diversity and Inclusion here on campus celebrated this momentous occasion in honor of all students, faculty, and staff who are a part of the LGBT community. Coming to terms with your sexuality and gender orientation can be an extremely hard thing to do, especially when you don't feel support from your peers, family members, or community which is why there are many people here at Northwest who are dedicated to making sure that all Bearcats feel like they have a place that they can truly express who they are. October is LGBT History Month, which was founded in October 1994 by Rodney Wilson, who is actually from Missouri, so that's like pretty cool. October was chosen to be the month of celebration to honor the marches that were for the lesbian and gay rights that took place in 1979 and 1987. While there are many individuals here at Northwest, just like Haley, who are working to bring to light the history and progression of LGBT rights, there are also many organizations here on campus doing the same thing. One of those being HERO. HERO's mission is to provide a safe place for members and allies of the LGBTQ community to share their views and identities by focusing on acceptance, community, education, and activism. I really love that on October 11th, which is National Coming Out Day, um, HERO partnered with the dining hall staff to um, decorate the food and just the dining hall all LGBTQ plus by dying like the food and it was just a really nice subtle way to incorporate that into students everyday life because well you know who doesn't love food. I know a lot of people um, from high school and even now in college that having their own little outlet of people that they know have their backs are doing everything that they can to make sure that they feel included makes them feel so much safer in the environment that they are in if they don't have that environment say in their home life or they feel like they don't have it even in their dorm life. While many people may just look at these symbols as flags with pretty colors, for others they represent a sense of identity, community, and belonging. With Stories That Matter to You, this is Courtney Rowe with Channel 8 News. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the Saks Grocery Bingo Night, along with highlighting some of the last week's homecoming events. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to Channel 8 News. I'm Courtney Rowe. And I'm Alexis Kuhner. One of the fan-favorite events that the Student Activities Council puts on every year is Grocery Bingo. After not being able to hold the Grocery Bingo event last year as a result of COVID restrictions, Students were definitely excited to get their free groceries last Thursday. Over $10,000 was spent on groceries in order to prepare for the event. And our reporter, U Holman, was able to sit down with the director of late night and weekend programming of the Student Activities Council to hear about it. The campus favorite grocery bingo hosted by the Students' Activities Council happened on Thursday, the 28th of October at the Rec Center. Members of SAC and officers of the University Police Department were present to help coordinate the event. Lots of groceries were available for grabs and students attended in their numbers for a chance to win a free bag of groceries. In the spirit of Halloween and homecoming, students dressed in different costumes and lucky participants who had their numbers called made their way to the grocery table to select items of their choice. Director of Late Night and Weekend Programming, Natalia Martinez, was excited with the turnout and shared the process SAC went through in preparation for the event. Honestly, I was really nervous, but I'm super excited to see something that I've only visualized in my head come to life. What we did is we looked at the past events that we had past grocery bingos. We kind of analyzed that and we kind of edited it upon there because previous year or last year it was COVID mitigations. So that kind of restricted it, but this year is going to be a lot more people. So we're like, okay, we need to double this event and make it bigger than it was last year. We created partnerships with UPD, Green Dot and Wellness. We had Student Rec Center here and we had Red Bull Girl come over here as well. And then we even partnered up with Hy-Vee and they really helped us a lot. And I'm so excited for all of our students to eat the amazing groceries that I made the list of. For the stories that matter to you, I have been Uhuman Ibromoto. Thanks, Sue Homan. Have you been receiving phone calls about donating blood to the Community Blood Center? 
Well, that is because there's a shortage of blood due to COVID-19, and they are trying to reach their quotas on donations to help save the lives of others. The Community Blood Center is the primary supplier of blood and blood components in the region, serving more than 65 local hospitals and medical centers. Last week, the Student Senate teamed up with the Community Blood Center to help boost blood supplies in Northwest Missouri. Chase Chambers has more on the story. Student Senate had their fall blood drive October 26th to the 28th in the Tower View Room on the third floor of the Union to donate to the Community Blood Drive. This year's event is back after COVID-19 canceled last year. Joseph Etheridge, the Civic Service Chair for Student, talks on preparation for this event. Typically, you reach our goals. Our goals are typically set at 70 to 80, um, and those are uh, need-based uh, goals. Yeah, we typically reach our goals, but today um, we had 26 people um, signed up for the blood drive, but we're also accepting walk-ins, so we're hoping to see a good turnout by the end of the day. I also spoke with Civic Service Co-Chair Lundin Fadiki on his role in this year's blood drive and what it meant for him to see people saving lives through this blood drive. My chairperson uh, told me a little bit about like you know what happened last year and how they were unable to get like you know blood due to COVID-19. So this year we're just trying to do as best as we can uh, to get uh, blood donated and also they're running short of it so that's why we're just trying to do as best as we can to get people involved. It means a lot to uh, to our university you know to the community as well because uh, you know being able to donate blood, you never know how many people you're going to save, but it's also uh, giving those people who need the blood an opportunity to live or another chance, so it means a lot. Students in it holds three blood drives throughout the school year, one in the fall, one in the winter scheduled for February 16th and 17th, one in the spring scheduled for April 20th through the 21st. If you would like to donate, keep an eye out for the Student Senate social media and also the university calendar for specifics on this event. For stories that matter to you the most, I'm Chase Chambers with KNWT Channel 8. Thanks, Chase. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at some of last week's homecoming festivities, like the variety show and annual homecoming parade. Don't go away. Welcome back to Channel 8 News. I'm Alexis Kuhner. And I'm Courtney Rowe. COVID-19 caused a lot of events last year to be either canceled or regulated by social distancing. However, this year's homecoming week was full of events for students, faculty, and the community to enjoy without the fear of COVID-19. Yes, and in fact, one of the biggest events that took place during last week's festivities was the annual Northwest Homecoming Variety Show. The variety show was filled with various acts of music, skits, dances, and more. And Lauren Adams has more on this event. The Homecoming Variety Show was held at Northwest Missouri State University on Friday, October 29th to showcase a variety of acts from different students. <laughs> Riley Getters, the executive chair for Royalty and Variety Show, played a large role in carrying on this traditional event. The Homecoming Variety Show is a chance for students to showcase their different skits or special talents for um, the entire university and all the alumni that come back to watch the show. Um, it just gives them a chance to show their Bearcat pride and another competition because we all love competition and homecoming. My favorite part about the variety show is just the amount of students that we get to participate in the variety show. Um, if you come to the show, you're going to see all the happy faces on stage um, and also just all the you know, family, students, and alumni that come to support these awesome students. One of the organizations that participated in the show was Sigma Sigma Sigma, a sorority on campus. Jennifer Deharsh, a member of the sorority, danced in a skit with the Sigma Phi Epsilon fraternity. I chose to be in the variety show because in Tri Sigma we're required to have 45 hours of homecoming hours and instead of going to just float I wanted to do something a little bit different and I'm a dancer so I like being on stage performing and so this was probably the best fit for me and it got me out of my comfort zone because I've never done theater before. We started about a month ago. We started practicing at SIGEP. We went through lines and then we just started to meet up multiple times a week. We learned to dance for <laughs> part of it. So that took a while, but we all have like partners and stuff, so it's super fun. At the end of the show, Homecoming King Ryan Shervington and Queen Annie Punt were crowned. This is a tradition that the Homecoming Committee hopes will continue for many years to come. For the stories that matter to you, this has been Lauren Adams with Kane WT Channel 8 News. Thanks, Lauren. Along with the Homecoming Variety Show and other festivities that took place last week was the annual Northwest Homecoming Parade. 
The parade took place last Saturday as a way to conclude homecoming followed by the football game against Nebraska Kearney. This year's homecoming parade featured student organizations, campus departments, and community organizations. As we stated last week, this year's homecoming theme was Bearcats Remember When, a time for present, graduating, and Bearcat alumni to reflect back on this momentous occasion before the pandemic. Kenzie Denning has more on the story. On Saturday, October 30th, the annual Northwest Homecoming Parade took place as Bearcats from all over gathered together to celebrate the end of homecoming week. Organizations participate by either walking in the parade or driving their floats. I sat down with Bailey Urban, who is the parade chair, about how planning this year's parade has gone, who is featured in the parade, and what the parade is all about. To me, the parade is all about everyone in the Maryville community with their families coming together with the Northwest students and kind of showing off the pride we have about being Northwest and being in Maryville. I think it's been pretty nice. It's just if you take your time and do a step by step and get everything done, it's it's worthwhile. What's featured in the parade is, I mean, we have Maryville businesses that are coming. So we have like dance studios or like United Fiber, different people like that. And then we also have the student organizations. We also have like on campus student organizations. And it's really awesome just to see like every single person come together with all different cultures and types of people coming together to really show off who they Homecoming are. Homecoming is a tradition for everyone, but here at Northwest, it's more than that. The Bearcats show their love and support for their school and for Maryville by bringing everyone together for this big event. This has been Kenzie Denning with Channel 8 News. Thanks, Kenzie. Before we go, we'd like to take a moment to thank all of the Northwest Media students and staff who worked so hard to put on the live streams for all of the homecoming festivities this weekend. We thank you for all your preparation and organization from the parade to the football game. Keep up the amazing work and continue to make the media department and the university proud. Well, that's all the time we have here for Channel 8 News. Be sure to tune in every Monday through Thursday at 6 p.m. right here at KNWT Channel 8. Or you can find us on our YouTube page at KNWT TV. From all of us here at Channel 8 News, I'm Courtney Rowe. And I'm Alexis Kuhner. And have, and have a, a great, great night. night.